It's unstable tubby with Sarah and Maggie. Hey bestie. Hey bestie. Uh summer is upon us and the Austin family is already sunburned. Already. Already? Already. That's how oh, pale yeah. my family is. Actually, like I'm I only have a little tiny bit of sunburn. The boys are pretty good, but Martha Jean and my husband, poor babies, are all oh, very no. burned. Was it mm-hmm. from swimming? Yeah, we went swimming and I put sunscreen on, but the thing about sunscreen is is that it it you can't get everywhere. You can't possibly. Mm-mm. You know, you can't possibly get everywhere. And so there were uh, some parts that were missed, and those parts mm. were found by Mr. Sun. Mm. I'm sorry. That's so painful. Yeah. But it's a good start. You know, like you have to get, when you're as pasty as myself and my family, you have to get a good base burn in order to make it through the summer. And I just like to think you know, this is the first the first burn of the summer. I feel like any dermatologist that is listening might disagree mm-hmm. with that. So please DM just Maggie. Do not DM me. It's not me. that I'm not trying. It's not that I'm not trying. I am. I just want to be clear. I am trying. It's just that we are. It's just hard. It's hard when I, you are, are built for like winter weather and then you live in a place where it's a hundred degrees, you know? Yeah. No, mm. I remember. And look, No judgment because I distinctly remember in college that first summer after my freshman year, I moved out of the dorm and into an apartment and one of the girls was like, you know how you get a really good tan is to mix iodine (gasps) and baby oil. And so we would put this baby oil mixture all over our bodies and lay out in the sun and thinking that was a good idea. I didn't get burned, surprisingly. I mean, I don't I don't burn too easily. Uh, but I'm really not in the sun as much anymore unless I'm walking because I'm like, give me all the shade yeah. I can have. Mm-hmm. But back when yeah. I was 18, 19, 20 years old and a big old dum-dum, I was like, yeah, let's rub my body with baby oil, which is already terrible because you're just getting more like Ugh. reflected light. And let's put – iodine why would i do that maggie i don't know i don't I'm know a big old dumb dumb you know what our gen our kids generation though like they wear like also i want to be clear my kids wear like the sun protective bathing suits too right right so it's like the burn happens in the one spot that is not completely covered in protective sun gear and that me that's that's my our our plight it's always for me, I feel like I forget or miss the feet and the back of the neck. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the, the sunscreen I buy now is like that zinc stuff. So while it's in a spray form, you have for the best way to do it is you spray it in your hands and then you rub it on the kids. And it's that yeah. zinc, so it's white. So you really have to rub it in. Yeah. I kind of want to buy the quote unquote not good, you know, copper tone or whatever spray. Because it's invisible and it's and it protects them, but it's easier to apply. But then, like, which mom guilt do you want more? You know. Well, let me tell you this: I used the zinc kind, and then my kids got burned. So I've been burned by zinc, good, healthy sunscreen, and I am going back to beach bum spray, the kind that smells like summer, goes on clear, covers all the parts. Yeah, it's it's like. As a mob, you have to make so many choices constantly. So many. And it's and with each of these choices, you're like, which one is the better of the two? And mm-hmm. if you don't make the right one, you have this guilt that society gives you. Like you're killing your children slowly with the sunscreen because it's not organic and zinc. Or you didn't buy the organic strawberries or whatever. But you know it's- what we're not doing? Rubbing our babies in baby oil and iodine. So I think we're doing yeah. okay. We're doing, we're doing okay. okay. We are protecting them as well as we can, whether it's – oh, man, it's hard being a mom. 
it's just, it's just hard yeah, being a mom. Just sigh. It's hard. Well, you know what's not hard is sharing facts with you. Are you ready oh, for a fact, Sarah? I love I love that transition. Yes, I am. All right. Well, Charlie Chaplin is a pretty recognizable fella with his little bowler hat and a tiny toothbrush mustache. But could you pick him out in a crowd? Because apparently it's harder than you would think, as he once enrolled in a Charlie Chaplin lookalike contest and came in 20th place. <laughs> That's fantastic. What a great bit. What a fantastic original bitster, you know? Do you think Charlie he Chaplin. entered the contest thinking, like, I'm going to win, and then I'll reveal that I am Charlie Chaplin? And then do you think he was disappointed, or do you think he was like, eh, these guys are better at being me than I am. I'm just going to see how well I do. Well, the Charlie Chaplin, and forgive me if if I'm wrong here, if you're a film buff, Ryan Polly, I'm looking at you. Do not come at me. Do not DM me. But he was a silent film star, correct? Right? For the yes. most part. So yeah. all he had to go off of is how you look. So like a voice, no one really knew how he sounded. Right? That's all true. People knew yeah. was his shtick, his character. How he looks. How right. he looks. And it's very stylized. Which is why it's you know? surprising. That, like, people only know him for his looks. You'd think they'd study, like, oh, I, I have to pay so much attention to what this guy looks like because I can't hear his voice. I'm not distracted by sound. Hmm. And yet. What year was this? It was, like, 1921, I think. Okay. Early 1920s. Okay. It would be harder now. It would be harder because hmm. of all the technology that we have available. But it does make, it's kind of similar so you know how AI is ruining lives as we know it. There was a national photography contest, a very prestigious contest. I do not know the name. Do not DM me. But the You can winner... DM her. D DM Sarah the name of this contest. DM her the <laughs> name. I actually DM Unstable Topics. I would love to know the name of this contest. Please the DM. The winner... The winner was AI generated art, photography art. And so oh. the, when it won, the guy was like, yes, I did this intentionally to show what AI can do and the destruction Ugh. of humanity. I added the destruction of humanity portion. That is not a direct <laughs> quote. But yeah, so it's, it's, like it's not fair that robots are doing like art and writing and fun things and then people are doing like crappy jobs that's not that's not it right no one Shouldn't wants ai yeah. be doing things no one wants to do 100 percent, 100 percent, and allow other people to explore their creative potential you know or you know what even better if if what we think is a crappy job is something you love to do don't let ai take it you do yeah it. you take you that do job it. back Take you it take back it from back. that AI. No one Artificial wants official intelligence. No one wants that. Just so I think can... artificial intelligence is just like it's like the non-organic version of intelligence, anyways. So yes, we should be so staying away from it. If you're a mom and you're listening to this, or a parent, because to be quite honest, dad should have dad guilt too. If you let your children. Lean into artificial intelligence, AI, such as writing their essays for them, creating artwork, maybe even like, I don't know, what other ridiculous things AI can do. You're, you got guilt. It's not good. It's not good. I will um, take an artificial intelligent robot vacuum, though. Oh. You have one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Oh. I'm, yeah. I'm okay. Yeah, with vacuums that. are fine. Yeah, that's fine. Well, Sarah, are you ready to react? Did we not react? Was that not a reaction in there? Dang. No, I mean, we reacted a lot, but we didn't. We did. I didn't ask you. didn't you do your. I mean, we don't have to. I don't have no, to. No, I ask want you. to because I was thinking to myself, have we reacted? And I thought it was a yes, but it's a no. Maggie, I'd love to react. 
Okay. Well, Charlie Chaplin came in 20th place in a lookalike contest. What is something that would make you recognizable to a crowd? That's a really great question. I get a lot because my looks are very ordinary. People are like, oh, you remind me of so-and-so, or you look like this person that I know. I'm like, cool, thanks. Um, Something that would make me stand out in the crowd or recognizable in a crowd, if I was carrying a vacuum, people would be like, you look like Sarah. Oh, I see the vacuum. People know that about you. you. That's your brand. You are are Sarah. Unfortunately, I guess at this point it is. If I get a free Dyson vacuum out of it, I will embrace this brand as long as they will have me. Yeah. We got to keep plugging Dyson. I keep tagging them. <laughs> Dyson, Dyson, Dyson. Dyson, Dyson. What would be your Artificial tagging? intelligence pick up on this. Dyson vacuum. Dyson, Dyson vacuum. Send us Dyson. a Dyson vacuum. Sponsorship. Sponsorship. Dyson. Dyson. I would love a Dyson. Same. What's yours, though? I think my my cackle laugh is what distinguishes me from other people who look like me, which is a lot of people. A lot of people look like me as well. I, I'm I often told so. I have a very common face. You don't think so? No. You know who I get a lot when I'm not wearing makeup and I'm like looking really stressed? I get, you look like that woman from A Handmaid's Tale. Mm. Elizabeth Moss. Right. But I don't ever get Elizabeth Moss. Like I don't get like, you look like Elizabeth Moss when she's in Mad Men, when she's looking cute. I get the woman from A Handmaid's Tale, the one who is like escaping for her life, living in a dystopian society. That's <laughs> that's what people see in me, that specific character. But if I cackle, they'll be like, oh, no, it's just Maggie. As to Earth signs, Sarah and Maggie are always preparing, which is why it's time to play Till Death Do Us Part. Aww, why? The game where they interview potential replacement besties in case the other one kicks the can. All right, Maggie. Your potential new bestie is a Denton based influencer who's using her love of sewing to educate others about the magic of making your own clothing. She has been sewing since she was four years old and has a passion for sustainable fashion. Her looks have walked the red carpet at New York Fashion Week. Her go-to outfit is a pair of ankle jeans with a classic white t-shirt. She's currently a TA at TWU in their fashion program. She runs a sewing school in Denton and can be found on the weekends with friends, family, and her husband and her blind cat, Toaf. Please welcome your so fabulous possible new bestie, Lilia Whittington. Hello, Lilia. Since you were four, you've been sewing? Yeah. So I actually, what's crazy is um, both my grandmas sew, which that's not crazy. But what's crazy is the trunk that I actually picked my very first fabric from for that first outfit I have in my possession (gasps) now. Oh, that is so special. Oh my yeah. That. Yeah. So were that's you something... hand sewing or using a machine when you were four? Well, so yes and no. So it was a little bit of hand sewing. It was a little bit of like super, very close supervision from my grandma to like, she was like, you can sew this one side. And I was like, okay. Sewed the side. And I mean, I've been hooked ever since. So. And do you still have the piece? You have I the love- trunk, but do you still have the piece you made? I have no idea. I just remember it was Eminem flannel fabric. I mean, classic. Classic. Right. Sorry. Oh, well, I yeah. was so excited about the idea of sewing it for. I jumped right in, Sarah. I'm already calculating. It's points. fine. It's fine. I'll be ready. Calcul- hey, Lilia, did I say your cat's name correctly? I feel like I did. <laughs> it's actually Toph. So um, we are very big anime fans and Avatar The Last Airbender fans in this house. So whenever we adopted Toph, we found out she was blind. We were like, oh my gosh, we need a fun name. And we were like halfway through the Google search of like blind anime character names. And we both looked at each other and we were like, Toph. And then we just bolted out the door. It's perfect. Yeah. I love it. It's not Toph like Toffee though. All right. No, it's Toph like. I'm a I'm a blind earthbender and I will kick your butt. <laughs> I mean tomatoes, love tomatoes. It. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Lilia, are you ready for your first very official, very formal question? Yes. 
All right. If you were on Project Runway, would you rather your hosts be Tim Gunn and Heidi Klum or the current host, Christian now, is it Seriano? Seriano. Seriano. Christian Seriano. Yes. Yes. Who would you rather your hosts be? Hold on. Siri just like decided to pop in on the conversation. So can you repeat that? Siri was <laughs> oh, she was like Seriano. She's like, You're talking to me. I'm the host of Project Runway. It's Seriano though, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. I said it correctly. Uh all right, here's your very here's your I'll do it. I'll do the whole question. Wonderful. Again. All right, Lilia, here's your very important, very serious first question. I'm ready. If you were on Project Runway, would you rather your host be Tim Gunn and Heidi Klum or the current host, Christian Siriano? I mean, uh- I love Christian Siriano. I love what he stands for. I love his mission as a designer. And honestly, like it, it's very inspiring to me. And so I would love to have Christian Siriano be my mentor on Project One Way. Even though like I grew up on Tim Gunn and Heidi Klum. And as a part German, I like to think I'm part German because I lived there for a little bit. Um, very much in love with Heidi Klum. But Christian Siriano, I mean, he's great. I love it. I love him too, personally. I have enjoyed the Bravo series with him on there. I'm hoping it comes back. I feel like they're recording, but I can be completely wrong. I think wrong. it is coming I, back, yeah. Yeah, I hope so. I have to say, I think you and Christian Siriano would be good friends. And I also think Christian Siriano and I would be good friends. So this is calculating well for you, Lilia. Uh, but I, I do have a, another tricky question for you okay it's a scenario oh okay okay so here's the scenario you're going into a super important meeting like it's life-changing opportunity and you're eating a hot dog and ketchup spills all over your blouse and your pants and it's like the most ketchup that you've ever seen in your entire life would you rather go into a meeting covered in these ketchup stains or run into target and buy a new fast fashion option Ketchup. <laughs> ketchup. Because and what would I you feel- say? I would just walk in and be like, listen, you're going to get the real me today. And we're just going to pretend like this isn't here. It's going to be the newest fashion statement, I promise. And just probably like roll Love with it. it and make it some joke. Because I grew up with five boys, like five brothers. They were all younger. And so stains mean nothing to me. I'm like, oh, it's a part of life. It is. It's what <laughs> happens. <laughs> It's like memories on your clothes, you know? Exactly. Like, yeah. I did have coffee this morning, and now it's yeah, on my pants. And, and now it's on my pants, or, um, yeah. But, yeah, I'd rather just wear the I love ketchup, it. you know? I think this – I love it. It's bold. I'd hire you. I'd be like, this is it. I love this chick. Let's roll with yeah. this. And then I pour ketchup on my shirt just to be like, yeah. Just like, wow. Yeah, the whole meeting Let's stands up, and they're like, you're hired, and ketchup everywhere. <laughs> Have you guys seen, um, oh gosh, everything everywhere all at once and no. the hot dog fingers. And I oh. do too. Oh, oh you gosh. gotta see it. There's, you'll, you'll. I have a hot take. Oh, do you? I have a hot oh. take. I started watching it and I fell asleep. <gasps> Stop. Yeah, no. And I told this writer's group that Maggie and I are in. And to be honest, some of them are like, yeah. Uh, me you too. know, it's definitely, it's one of those movies where. Like fashion wise, I was like hooked all the whole time. I loved it. I loved. I can see that. Like yes, the transitions from different styles, from different worlds, and then just the, all of it was just so just like wow. My eyes were like, Wah! but I could see. I could see your your standpoint, Sarah. I could see your standpoint. I'm gonna have to watch. I appreciate it that validation and, and include that in my point calculations. Like, yes. which bestie do I agree with here? You well, know? wow. There's. There's a whole scene with ketchup and Um, yeah. (laughs) Beautiful. All right. Lilia, are you ready for your final and very serious question? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. So we know you're into anime, hence your fantastic kitty cat. If you were to pick an anime character that most accurately 
describes or portrays Maggie, who would it be? Oh, gosh. I, there's yeah, no wrong female, answer because I don't know hitting. anything about anime. So you could tell me anything and I'll just be like, yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, my favorite one is Avatar The Last Airbender because of – I mean, we named our cat after that. So – I would say guitar probably because you're just you're very I like after listening to you guys all morning, you know, you're very nurturing. You're very family oriented. You're very much like, OK, let's let's get everything together. Like, let's go. You know, you're very much like like driven and very leader oriented. So I would say I would say mm-hmm. guitar. I think that's true. I think that's true. In fact, um, that scored <laughs> you an extra 35 points on this calculation. And wow. it's wow. official. <laughs> You would make an excellent replacement bestie, Lilia. I would be honored if if I ever need a replacement. To yeah. Have you. I, I don't think you will anytime soon, but I'm flattered and honored to be considered in the running to be a, a replacement. Lilia, I could talk to you all day and I could watch you sew all day. I am obsessed with watching your creations online. So for those of you who aren't already Mm -hmm. following you, where can one go to see all that you're doing and all that you're up to? Absolutely. So you guys can follow me on Just Lilia on Instagram or justlilia.com. I'm actually working on my master's portfolio this summer, so I'm going to be sewing lots of things. Um, I have like part of it over there. I have part it in a sketchbook. So I'm about to just share all of that this summer. Um, I also host local sewing workshops. We're holding our first adult sewing camp because adults need fun summer camps too. I will stand that and that is a rock and a hill I will die on. Um, So we're hosting our first adult sewing camp. We have a teen sewing camp coming up. I'm going to be hanging out at Sew Golden all summer. So come hang out, come sew. Even if you don't sew, just come on out. Well, I'll teach you. We'll figure it out. I, I love that. Hey, when is your um, next class? What date is that? So the next class is going to be the swimwear class. That's going to be on May 30th. But in June, I think I'm taking a little bit of a break to prepare for the July camps. And then the July camps are going to be starting July 23rd, 26th, and August 6th. For the it's the it's the I love it's that. the Sundays of July, so those are the adult camps. Thank you so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode, we would love a review, subscribe, or for you to share this with a friend you think would like it, or all three of those things. You can do all three and make our day and help us grow.